In this video, I'm going to show you a really effective way to develop your baby's communication skills. This will help you to avoid a situation where you have a toddler who only grunts or screams to express their needs. Now this strategy doesn't feel natural and it's probably not something that you have tried or heard of yet, but it's actually really easy to do and you will notice improvements straight away. And if you already have a toddler who is grunting and screaming, this will also help to develop their communication skills and break that habit. Often a lack of communication skills is a result of us being good parents by anticipating their needs. At first, this anticipation is required. Your newborn cries and you anticipate their need for food. Your baby yawns and they become fussy and you put them to bed or they drop a toy and you pick it up and give it back to them before they even have a chance to cry. But as your child gets older, if you continue to anticipate their needs, you actually don't give them the opportunity or create any incentive for them to communicate with you. Often it gets to the point where you're actually anticipating your baby's and toddler's needs to avoid a tantrum or a screaming child. But by jumping in and giving them what they need before they ask, you're actually perpetuating this problem and leading to a baby or toddler who actually screams or grunts to gain your attention and express their needs. Now from around nine to 10 months of age, your baby will actually tell you things by using babble, gestures, and eventually words. And you really need to ensure that you foster and encourage your baby or toddler to actually use sounds and gestures rather than screaming and grunting to express their wants and needs. So how do you do it? You pause. I know it sounds really simple, but pausing is one of the most powerful tools that you can actually use to build your baby's and toddler's communication skills. When you speak to your child, they need time to actually process what you have said, as well as time to think about and produce a response. And the amount of time they need is actually significantly longer than we need as adults. Language and communication is so new to them. Essentially, they're learning a whole new language. So just imagine you were learning another language and your teacher said something to you in that language. You would need time to think about what each individual word means. And then you'd need time to think about which words you're going to use to form a response. The same applies to your child. They need processing time. And often as parents, we don't give them that time. So for example, it might look something like this. You might place your baby on the floor and you know they're gonna want toys to play with. So you anticipate that need and give them a bag of toys right away. But when you do that, you're not giving your baby the opportunity to tell you in their own way by using sounds, gestures like pointing or shaking their head, using eye gaze, so either looking at you or the item that they want, or words to tell you what they want or what they need. So instead of anticipating your baby's needs, it's actually really important to pause to encourage and teach your baby to communicate effectively. So for example, instead of giving them the toys right away, you would actually sit them on the floor and wait approximately five seconds to give your baby the chance to actually point to, look at, or make a sound in the direction of the toys. And you wanna show your child that you're actually waiting for that response by doing things like raising your eyebrows, smiling at them, or opening your mouths. And this actually shows them that you're paying attention to them and that you are actually expecting a response. And what you'll notice is that they will communicate what they want. It could be reaching towards the toy, looking at it or actually making a sound. And when they do that, you wanna pick up the toy while naming it and then hand the toy to your child. So for example, if your baby tells you in their own way they want the car, you would actually pick the car up and you would say, you want the car, here is the car, car, let's go, broom. When you give your baby the item that they are requesting, you allow them to experience the power of communication and this positive experience will actually motivate them to communicate with you again in the future. And the added benefit is by naming the item that they're wanting, you are giving them the opportunity to hear the word multiple times and this helps them to understand what that word means so that when they are ready to talk, they know exactly what to say. 
Here are some other practical ways that you can actually use this technique to encourage your baby or toddler to communicate with you. But before I get into those, make sure you click on the link in the description box below to get the free zero to 12 month old developmental milestone PDF so you know exactly what to expect in your baby's first year of life. So the first thing you can do is put your baby's favorite toys slightly out of reach. So that might be on a shelf, on a table or actually in a see-through container with the lid on. And what you wanna do is wait for your baby to look, point or babble or make a noise in the direction of that toy before you give it to them. And obviously when they communicate what they want, you would label the item a few times as you give it to them. Another way to do it is when you are playing with your baby or toddler, just add in a pause. So for example, if you're rolling a ball to each other, you would roll the ball back and forth a few times. So let's say three times. And then on the fourth time, you would actually hold the ball and wait for your little one to either look up at you or make a sound to say, hey, push me the ball again. And when they do that, you would say, ready, set, go and push the ball and then continue that play. Or when you're at the park with your child, you could put them on the swing, but don't automatically start pushing them. Wait for them to actually let you know that they wanna be pushed by looking back at you or making a noise. And when they do that, then you would start pushing them on the swing. You can also add in a pause during mealtime. So you could give them an empty plate or cup and just pause so your baby will actually have time to let you know that something is wrong. So they might look at you or make a noise and let you know that they need something in their cup or they actually need some food. Or you could give them one piece of their favorite food and then pause and wait for your child to actually request more by hitting the table, looking at you or grunting. And at that point, you would give them the next piece of food. Giving your baby the opportunity to actually choose between two objects is another great way that you can implement a pause. So for example, if you're wanting your baby to choose between two toys, like a car or a ball, you would hold them in one hand each, and you would wait for your baby to communicate their choice by either reaching towards the item they want, pointing at that item or making a sound while looking at it. And when they do that and make their choice, you would of course give them the toy they want while labeling what they have chosen. You could also just stop talking and wait for your child to actually start a conversation. So if your baby or toddler is actually watching something outside like a dog, instead of jumping in and saying, look, it's a dog, you would actually get close to them and look at your child and wait for them to actually start a conversation, which they will do if you give them time. Eventually, they will actually look back at you and maybe point to that dog or make a sound. And at this point, you would say, yes, it's a dog and point to the dog as well. So remember, next time you instinctively go to anticipate your baby or toddler's needs, pause and give them a chance to communicate with you. Now, if you want more tips like this to help your little one communicate with you, the next thing you wanna do is actually watch this video to find out 10 more simple stress-free strategies that you can actually start using today to get your baby talking. Thanks for watching and I will see you next week where I'll share more parenting tips and tricks.